Russia's top diplomat, Sergei Lavrov, has arrived in China for what Moscow says is uh, talks on the war in Ukraine, bilateral ties, and the situation as well in the Asia-Pacific region. The Russian foreign minister is set to talk with his Chinese counterpart, Wang Yi, on a series of so-called uh, hot topics that will also include joint cooperation in international organizations. Well, we're going to cross then to Beijing, talk to our correspondent who joins us from there, Yena Li. Yena, tell us then uh, exactly uh, what this meeting, a little bit more about what this meeting is about. Well, no doubt the war in Ukraine will be top of the agenda. Stuart, just last week, Sergei Lavrov described Beijing's peace plan as the most reasonable one so far. And a reminder that uh, the 12-point position paper was published back in February 2023, and it called for rather vague actions such as ceasing hostilities and resuming peace talks. And at this stage, Russia's idea of a ceasefire is to freeze the war and the soldiers in their current positions, whilst Ukraine uh, wants every last Russian soldier out of its territory. And that just shows you how easy it could be to agree with some of uh, Beijing's uh, peace plan. Another point, though, in its document was the rejection of unilateral sanctions. Moscow has been uh, cornered by Western-led sanctions and would wholeheartedly agree with anybody who tries to criticize them. Chinese support, though, hasn't just been with words. Um, there have been multiple reports of Chinese companies selling spare parts, uh, technology, vehicles, and, and funneling them through uh, Hong Kong. Turkey, Central Asia, etc. And these items are potentially being used in Russia's war effort. And though uh, Beijing has not crossed what the EU would call a, a red line, that is to say directly selling weapons to uh, Moscow, these economic ties surely help uh, warm their relationship in these times. And finally, Sergei Lavrov's visit is also an, op an opportunity to lay the groundwork for a, a potential presidential summit. There are reports that suggest that President Putin could be here in Beijing as early as next month, which would make China his first foreign visit since his re-election. And of course, Yen, are so many other countries very concerned about Russian-Chinese relations watching these talks uh, pretty anxiously, some of them anyway. Absolutely. Neighbours, uh, competitors, rivals of the two countries, as well as observers of authoritarian states, are all watching the warming uh, ties between Russia and China with a wary eye. Because what we have here is, you know, strongman leadership, where leaders on both sides are becoming more and more, you know, oppressive at home and more and more aggressive abroad. And the most urgent problem and, the, and an existential one uh, for Europeans is Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Because despite it, China and Russia, well, they've reached a record high in trade line last year, 240 billion US dollars. So that went up more than 26% year on year. NATO's head warned just last week that Beijing was propping up Russia's war economy. And just a few days ago, Bloomberg reported that uh, Antony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, briefed his EU allies on the scale and scope of China's support for Russia, adding that it now included geospatial intelligence. And then, of course, we also have that bigger picture geopolitical uh, landscape to China and Russia getting cozy with each other because of this purported shared and common vision. Their leaders both promote multilateralism in order to put an end to what they call US hegemony. They use anti-imperialist logic to try and uh, flirt with the global south and all of that said, though, these two countries don't necessarily always agree. Their interests might not always converge. They've had a long and complicated history. They share a border of more than 4,000 kilometers. They compete for influence as well in Africa. And most of all, their relationship has entered not only a new era of friendship, not only just this no limits partnership but that both sides love to talk about, but also a new era of heightened imbalance or of dependence because Moscow now needs Beijing far more than Beijing needs Moscow.